The seven degree runner angle, it's a lie. Let's talk about it. All right, guys, welcome back to another Bane's Basics. Today, the seven degree runner angle lie. We've all heard it. Uh, it gets thrown around in the industry a lot. Um, is it right or is it wrong? We're gonna talk about that today. And there's a few things that are misleading when people talk about runner angles. So we're gonna cover a little bit of that today. And again, I just wanna thank everyone for the comments. Really, really good. Uh, this has come up a couple of times with uh, what are the right angles. If you're chasing angles, you're looking at engines totally wrong in the first place. Yes, there's certain angles we don't want to exceed and that seems to be around about the seven degrees. Uh, but we need to look at uh, things more based on our airspeed targets rather than actual angles because the seven degree will only work in a optimal uh, third harmonic length. And even then, uh, the seven degree has other influences that affect that, like piston speed, piston dwell, TDC, rod to piston ratio. So how over square the bore is. So generally speaking, the less oversize, uh, over square an engine is, the more taper it needs a and vice versa. So the more over square an engine, so like Formula One, the less taper it will actually need. And we see this, right? Um, less growth over the runner, better average velocity over the runner and so on. This is why, especially in, in the twin cam scene, um, and even some of the newer engines like I've shown, you know, the, the Corvette engine and also uh, the new uh, Bugatti uh, NA 1000 horsepower, uh, 8.3 litre, I think it is. That manifold, we're going to do a video on that. Really, really good example of how little taper you actually need when the induction system is designed right. So I'm going to break down why the seven degrees actually misleading because uh, I see a ton of people that don't even look at harmonic lengths and they just go straight to seven degrees because they think that is what is optimal. Uh, so again, like I say, the best way to look at any intake is to ignore the angle and look at the airspeed. And we've covered this in our intake building series with our big blocks and, and two different engines um, and, and showing that how the cylinder head alone is going to dictate how much angle we need. Meaning if we've got a small cylinder head, so a cylinder head that's probably the MCA is slightly undersized or the, the, the valve's a little bit small or the port volume itself isn't quite adequate for the RPM and cubic capacity we're doing, then the runner's naturally going to have to have more taper because we need to slow the airspeed down in the runner to compensate for the higher airspeed in the port or too high airspeed and vice versa. If we've got a cylinder head that is too big, the valve's a little big, the MCA is a little big, then we can close that runner up um, so we can have less angle to increase airspeed to get our averages up across that induction and help it that way. So in a perfect world, yes, we might be close to seven degrees, but uh, I'm just going to break down a better way to do it and why we should be looking at cross-sectional area of the opening and the whole dynamics of the engine. Like I just explained, cylinder head is going to dictate. We can't look at a runner in isolation and go, seven degrees is right. We have to look at the whole combination uh, and we have to look at the primary induction length as one unit, meaning from the opening to the valve. So just saying that we need seven degrees taper in a runner without saying, well, what's the cylinder head? Where's the MCA? What are we using it for? And so on and so on and so many other factors uh, becomes very, very misleading. So, and my first example is going to be non-optimal, meaning a runner, say, on the fourth harmonic or not on the third harmonic. So we're just going to take a, say, 7,500 RPM engine f for now, which needs roughly about a 14-inch induction length total. So we could be 9 inches above the cylinder head, depending on how long the port length is. But let's say, for instance, we can't say, let's say that's 9 inches. But 
our bonnet height or the restriction in the manifold shape or the V is only going to allow for, say, five inches. So the runner can only be this long. Is the taper going to be the same? Now, if you followed my uh, videos for long enough, you'll know then no, it's not. Now we need a different angle. And the reason being is because we have to increase airspeed sooner. We have to make that runner narrower in the taper. So now the runner will be, say, like so. Well, we'll even finish at the same thing. So now it might be three degrees. And the reason we're doing this is to try and compensate for the lack of that inertia length that we just cut out. We're trying to increase velocity sooner. And this is where it comes into that radial profiling again. What works at that length, so if that's 7 degrees and it's at 180 uh, feet per second, then we might be on that 8 mil 5 16th radius. But now we have to run a shorter runner. Now we're running at five inches. So now our entry airspeed, because we've also chose a different angle, because we're trying to get this to actually work and fill the cylinder, similar to what the longer runner would have, but we don't have that inertial length now. So now that airspeed here is maybe 240 feet per second. So now we need a three eight or half inch radius. So there seems to be a gradient there. Um, from about 150 to 300 feet per second, 350 feet per second, we need about a half inch to 5'8". So as our airspeed slows down, again, this is back to our vena contractor mechanism, that waterfall effect. How much velocity does that air have to how much radius do we need? Again, same as a race car. Uh, if we're going into really, really tight corners, we're, we're much, much slower. So this 180 feet per second is much slower, so we don't need a big radius there. We only need a 5 16th. But this 240, we need a bigger radius to turn the air. This is why you'll see shorter, uh, or what I call suboptimal lengths with bigger radiuses. We see this in ITB with parallel trumpets. So what, what they're trying to do because they don't have a lot of uh, runner length, they can't develop a lot of inertia really, really uh, over the proper length and use wave tuning. So they run a parallel bell with a really big 5.8 radius on the top. And that's because this airspeed is this airspeed. And we're getting a lot of density separation because we're accelerating the air very, very quickly. So if this is uh, similar to butterfly diameter, we're going to be maybe even 300 feet per second there. So that means just under the bell is already 300 feet per second. There's no gradient like we'd have in a proper tapered manifold, so we need a bigger radius. So this is why I don't like the seven degree rule. I get tons of people asking me about it. I think it is um, sort of missing the mark because when do we especially in this industry, ever get an induction and cylinder head that is absolutely perfect. Again, if you're working in pro stock, then maybe seven degree will be the magic number. But again, slight variations in the cylinder head and runner and stuff may cause you to change it, right? It might be six and a half or 7.2 or whatever. But again, we're going back to fundamental principles here. We're, we're trying to create that Venturi as stable as possible. So if if the port is a little quick, then we'll need a little bit more tape, taper that way. Uh, if the port is a little slow, we're going to narrow it up a little bit to get that average energy up to where we need it to make horsepower where we need it. And that's how we do it by closing the runner up if we can't make that runner length. Because if we just left that at short, it's just going to RPM. It's just going to it's going to rev, and you're not going to make power. The, the The power curve will just be soft, right? So you, you're going to see something like this rather than something like that in your power curve. And it might be 20, 30 horsepower or, or 100 horsepower if you're talking 1,000 horsepower NA. So we have to shrink that. So And, and we've nearly halved the, the, or we've over halved the angle to compensate for that loss in length. So this is where I don't like the rule. 
Uh, that's why, and this is also why we need to adapt the radius to the airspeed, because that's another question I get, what's the right size radius, well, at what airspeed? And that should start to make sense now, once you understand that all we're trying to do is control that vena contractor. So this is where a lot of people say, well, let's just put a big radius on it, and then we won't have any vena contractor. But then we've extended, so as a radius gets longer, it extends that transitional length of the wave. So we really start to soften the wave out and we're not actually using that harmonic element properly by using big bell radiuses. And that's what, again, what they show on the dyno. They're very, very soft. We, we don't create that amplitude. We don't create that snap. Same as on the exhaust. If we just bellowed it out to the next pipe size, we wouldn't get a clear snap, a clear break in the header. This is why we use stepped headers. They actually step to the next size and the transitional length is small as possible because we want that break, we want that clear change in velocity to send the wave signal back uh, to the valve. And, and same here, we want a clear break off the runner. This is why we only want as much radius as needed. And again, if we look at the air speeds, they'll tend to dictate what sort of radius we need as a minimal function. And you can test this on a flow bench. You start making radiuses off the cylinder head uh, and you can do a, a 3.8. So like a super, super flow is a great example. A 10 inch bench, you basically don't need any radius at all because it's down near 100 feet per second. You can pretty much flow the cylinder head on a you know five inch or 10 inch, um, say a super flow 110. Uh, that was one of my first benches. You put the cylinder head on then, you barely see 2% difference with, with a, um, a radius on it, half inch radius. But get on a, a, a 300 and start flowing stuff at 28 inches, now we're at like 350 feet per second, and you need minimal half inch radius for that. If I pull that off, uh, you watch the cylinder head lose massive 30, 40 CFM straight away because now we're tearing off that hard window of the port. That's what the radius did. So yeah, two aspects we need to look at. This is why I don't really like the seven degree rule and hopefully that clears it up guys. See you in the next one.